So yeah, welcome everyone. We're going to talk about you describe. <laughs> I'm just going to cut out the, 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 that intro. So before we get started, um, I'm going to do a poll because I want this to be a little interactive. So let's see here. I'll launch this poll. And feel free to ask questions in the chat if you'd like. But we're just going to do this quick poll here. And it's Do you need audio descriptions on all videos you share with your students? Okay. All right. So I think we've got a pretty good response, right? 82%. So I'm going to end the poll here. And let's see what came up. So it looks like most of you said yes. And a few no's. Um, the actual, the answer is no. You do not need to have audio descriptions on all your videos. There's some situations where you wouldn't need um, audio description. So let's say you had a video with kind of a TED talk that, or say an interview where it was just two people talking to each other. In that case, just talking heads, you wouldn't need audio descriptions for that video. Also, like if you're doing like a PowerPoint presentation and you describe all of the slides in your lecture, so if you if you weave in the text that's on those slides into your lecture, then you wouldn't need to add extra audio descriptions for for those types of situations. So um, and also, if you don't have a student who requires audio descriptions, um, if you don't get that accommodation request, then you you probably wouldn't need to worry about it. But it is kind of a, a good thing to be ready for. So um, I'll leave that there. And then I'll share my screen. Let's see here, oops, I better. So this is, uh, this is from CSUN actually. And this is kind of tells you what audio descriptions are. I think we kind of know what they are, but they're basically uh, voiceover that describes the action that's going on in the video or other sort of visual content that a student that might have uh, low vision, a blind student uh, wouldn't be able to understand or get the same experience for uh, a student that, that didn't have, that, that could see, right? So um, these, and you can see on the right of this slide here, um, it, it tells you kind of, the other benefits. So not only does it help blind students and low vision students, but it also helps in other situations uh, for these types of learners and new language learners. It's also very helpful um, to describe what's happening that I don't know. <laughs> and then other other people as well can benefit from this. So that's kind of a nice bonus. And then I'll, I'll scroll down a little bit and we'll look at the second slide. And this is pretty interesting. The goal is to make the visual information accessible to people who are blind and have limited vision, but others may benefit. Um, and then if videos are created with accessibility in mind, audio descriptions aren't probably necessary. And this is what I talked about. So if you describe the visual elements or if they are described already, um, and then here's an example, man speaking at a podium for a static presentation. You don't need to explain that, <laughs> you know, the, the student's not going to get anything from that more than than anyone else. So um, that's pretty, pretty good to know. And then here it is, for example, you do not need audio description for talking heads or for texts on slides, as long as the slide text is woven into what you say. So I, I kind of like this, this description of what it actually is. This uh, PowerPoint presentation here talks about a bunch of other things as well. Um, um, so, and including captioning. 
And then let me go down to this slide. Yeah, read it out loud for people who can't see the screen. Famous quotes, text on screen. So if, if the video has like a title, you, you'd want to read that aloud if it wasn't already said in the video. Image descriptions, full website address, um, and then it avoid, this is more for when you're making videos, avoid using here, click here, you know, and vague language like that. You would want to say like, you know, click the, the button, right? Describe what's on the screen, where it is on the screen. So um, I'm guilty of that too. When I make videos, I'm getting a lot better. Like I'm always saying in the upper right corner, click on the three dots in the upper right corner. Some, something like that, where it gives more of a, of a description there. So let me check my notes. All right, we talked about why it's needed. I launched the poll. Okay, so now we'll go to the um, actual software. And it's really cool. It's this website called youdescribe.org. And this was developed by the Smith Kettering uh, Institute for the Blind, I believe they're called. So it's it was grant funded by the government. And it's this awesome way that you can do it yourself. So you don't have to rely on grants or other people doing it. Maybe people, you know, sometimes when you pay a service to do it, the voice isn't uh, human <laughs> and they may not be, it might not be what you want. It, it's still pretty good, but uh, you want, you're the subject matter expert as the teacher. So I'm sure you can do as good or better a job than most of these outside services can do. And, uh, and it's actually pretty easy and it can be fun as well. So here, here is the um, website itself. The one requirement, and I'll zoom in a little bit. Let me see here if I can zoom in on this. There we go. The one requirement for using this uh, service is that you do need a Google account. So you can create a Google account. If you have a Gmail account, that, that's a Google account. So uh, they're free. You can get them pretty easily. You just go to google.com and sign up. Um, and then once you have that, you can create an account here. So you'll see there's in the upper right corner, right? You'll see sign in with Google. That's the only requirement you need to, uh, to create a, a Udescribe account. And then you can see even without an account, you can search for videos that have been described. And let me see here. So let's search for one. So I can give you an example, child development. And actually I'm gonna make sure, I'm gonna stop share briefly just so I can make sure that the audio is shared. Okay, and it is, it's on. So let's watch uh, this one here. This is a Braille Institute video. My name is Carissa Lamara, and I am the parent to two children, ages three and seven. They're both visually impaired uh, due to LCA, which is Leber's congenital amaurosis, and it's a genetic condition that affects the retina and causes blindness from birth. One of the first phone calls I made was to a person in the community, and they're the ones who first told me about the Braille Institute. And they're actually the ones who organized uh, the first group of women who came to the house. And the Braille Institute representative, which was Sue Parker, was one of those people. I'm Sue Parker Strafasi. I'm Director of Child Development Services here at Braille Institute. At the beach, Sue Parker Strafasi and a visually impaired child play together at the water's edge. Generally, we get a phone call from the family or from a referring party. It could be a physician, it could be a school district, it could be someone in the community who is trying to help a child. And then what we do, one of our consultants then actually makes an appointment with the family to, to meet them in their home. And so actually the consultant will go into the home and um, just talk to the family about what their concerns are. They come to the house, it's wonderful and convenient because they do it based on our schedule. And they work with the kids in their own environment so they're really comfortable. They bring toys 
whirring toys, whizzing toys, light up toys, mylar balloons, anything that can crinkle and stimulate vision. And they work with them on not just stimulating vision, but their fine motor skills and how to pick up small items and it's to get them ready to learn Braille in the future. I met Parissa when I was a child development consultant before I became director. I could see immediately that Parissa just was such a lively person and such a great parent that she was going to be able to really kind of take this information and run with it. But also she had lots of questions. As a parent, when you're in the situations, there, there's a lot of information being thrown at you. And it, it's really difficult to process it all. And so it's good to have an advocate there and the Braille Institute person is that advocate. Kids and parents enjoy a Braille Institute Beach Day with activities and booths run by Braille staffers. Today is the annual Beach Day for the Braille Institute. So I'm going to stop it there. Um, I think this is a really good example of of an audio described video. So like you'll notice the the descriptions were very brief. Um, the voice was nice and clear and friendly and it wasn't describing every single detail that was going on you'll you'll notice it they didn't mention that the woman had long hair and was wearing glasses it was you know some of the information some of the um problems with described videos is if people kind of go a little overboard and <laughs> describe every single detail um, really, you want to use uh, what we learned in screenwriting, economy of words. So you want to like explain what's going on in the in the most succinct way you can. This is a, actually a really good exercise for um, screenwriters and any kind of writing. Um, if you want to like assign this as a extra credit assignment for someone, like you watch, you basically want to watch the video and pick the parts that you think that there's action happening important to the content. So you don't need to describe every single detail um, unless, you know, if, if you were teaching a fashion design course, then, then you would describe what the person was wearing in, in detail or like an art class, you would wanna describe what the painting showed. Um, but in, in a lot of these situations, you're just giving giving the gist right like what what's what do i need to know and you don't want to like insert your own opinions or anything like that um you just want it to be um just just uh what it is say less is more and i think this is a good um, example of that you'll also notice that this video when it played it actually pauses the video and then you hear the voiceover come in to describe what's going on. So we'll get into a little bit of that later, but there's two types of audio descriptions that you can choose when you're making these yourself. One is called an inline, which is um, basically if there's, if there's a, enough space in the video itself, you can talk over the video. So while it's running, you can, you can insert your voiceover, your description, or um, I think it's called extended. I'll, I'll check. But the other method is actually what, what this person did, which was it pauses the video. So sometimes when you don't have a natural uh, gap where you can do your uh, voiceover, you will use the other one where it will pause the video like this one. And then you can uh, say what you need to say and then it'll play it'll automatically play the video once once that's over so it's pretty um versatile that way uh i've some of the uh, other ones aren't like when you go through a vendor sometimes they'll talk over someone else talking and it can get a little confusing for the person that's watching or listening to the video so it's a good this is like a great free thing <laughs> i can't believe i found it when i i was like just so over the moon when I found this because I was like, oh, this would have saved that that situation. Okay, Jennifer, you have a question. Hi, Cyrus. Thank you for this. Um, and maybe you were already going to say it, but um, I I love this idea because of the way you say it. Um, it can help people. It can help different kinds of people in different kinds of ways. And so I was wondering because as I was watching this, I wasn't seeing any captioning with 
written down with the um with what the person was saying so, good question great okay. question so um you'll notice just because these and it's uh, these are only youtube videos that you can do this for this this uh particular service only works for youtube um so you'll want to check uh that the youtube video has closed captions as well um it's another best practice for universal design and and uh you'll see like the little cc button here so if if you have um other students that want to that maybe you have hearing impairments, they would just click the CC button and that turns on closed captionings in the video. So if the video you're using already has captions and doesn't have audio descriptions, then that's the best video you can make in this system here. So it'll have both. Um, I know some other teachers, uh, if, if the audio descriptions are very detailed and can make the video longer, you know, if it's a long video with like a lot of stuff you need to describe, um, you might want to actually embed two versions. So you could take the one out of YouTube that just has the captions and then have a link below it, or you can embed it below and say audio described version. So you're giving your students a choice there, which what, what they want. Um, I think that's probably the best way to go um, for this. And that's a great question. So let me check my notes here. So um, just bear with me a little bit. All right. So yeah, if you just want to search for videos, we you just go to you describe and type in what you want, you know, and it'll give you videos that are already described. So this might save you some time. So maybe you want to just a simple funny video that these are these are ones you can just search yourself you don't have to make it yourself um but the good thing about this is if you make it other other people uh can search for that your video and they'll they'll use it they can use it too they can watch it too so what what you're doing is you're not only helping your students but you're helping other people that are just generally want to watch videos with audio description so i love that this kind of open source free uh thing it's such a cool cool thing so um i'm not going to cover how to get a, a google account if you want to learn how to do that you can just look on youtube how to how to create a google account it's very simple it's just like signing up for anything else um, but i will show you once you have a google account you can just go to this website and then you click uh, in the upper right corner that blue button that says sign in with google it's going to pop up all of your accounts. I do recommend you sign into your Google account before you go to you describe because then it'll just pop up like this and you can just choose your account that you've linked uh, to you describe. I've already done it, so um, it's not going to show. But if, if you don't have a Google account it'll, or if you don't have it already synced with this, it'll it'll give you some more directions on how to do that. It's very simple. And then once you sign in like this you can see in the upper right corner it's now got my google avatar which is my old kitty nikiro uh love that cat <laughs> so now i'm now i'm logged in and now i can make descriptions for a video if i want to uh, once you've logged in so that's the only difference one if you don't log in you can search if you do log in then you can can create. So let me check my notes. All right. So this is kind of tricky uh, at first because there's no button or thing that says, okay, I want to describe a video. The way you do it is first you find the video in YouTube. That's the way I recommend doing it. And then you actually search for it in you describe to see if it's there. So I'm going to go to YouTube and I already have a video that I want because I, I'm a little bit prepared. So I wanted this video here. It's a possum playing dead. <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm, I'm obsessed with possums. 
we rescued a little possum and then I started looking up all this stuff about possums that are so fascinating. So this is a good example. It's a three, basically a three minute video. Um, we can watch a bit of it or uh, we can just put it into you describe. Let's watch like a little bit of it. And while we watch it, I want you uh, to think about what needs to be described in this video and sort of what you would write because part of the preparation in doing this is you're going to write yourself a little script uh, that you'll use uh, when you record your audio description so let's go ahead and watch this in youtube as i was strolling in my garden today i saw this strange animal uh, who looks like a big mouse to me i've never seen uh, such an animal before and uh, his ears look weird to me. So uh, I googled it quickly and it seems like that this is a possum. Never seen a possum before and Google says that uh, it's not a dangerous animal. So I'm going to follow him around and see what he's doing here. Might be interesting. Okay, he's on the move. I'm going to follow around. He came out on the other side. He is walking really slow as if he's sick. Okay, he's upset with me now. I think I need to back out. He doesn't like my presence there. Let me quickly check on his behavior on Wikipedia. <laughs> So Wikipedia says, when threatened or harmed, they will play possum, mimicking the appearance and smell of a sick or dead animal. This physiological response is involuntary rather than a conscious act. Hmm. So he is definitely looking sick. So I don't know if he's acting it out or he's really sick. I don't know. I'll just watch him and see what happens next. But it is strange that Wikipedia is saying that uh, it plays sick or dead. I mean, even dead when it feels threatened. Anyways, I'm going to go inside and see later on. Uh, He's still sitting there. He's not going anywhere. I don't know. Okay, I'll check on him, check on him later. Oh my God! He's lying there. Is he really dead? No, his stomach is moving. Oh, Wikipedia says that he pretends to be dead. Is, he, is that what he's doing? Oh my God! <laughs> and when I went back after one hour, it's like he's gone. Thank God for that. You know, he is alive and he is safe. God bless him. It was an amazing experience. Okay. So uh, I love it. it's, a, I love it. it's a lovely video. Yeah, I loved it too. I loved, I loved it. it. And it's, it's hard actually, because sometimes you, you get into watching the video, so you might not be thinking about how to describe it, right? But I hope, right. I hope that you were watching it with that in the back of your mind. Mm -hmm. So very simple video. Uh, anyone want to throw out um, what they think would need to be described uh, first in this video? As I was true. You might want to, you might want to set it up uh, in terms of maybe giving the student a heads up in terms of what they're, you know, an overview of what they're going to see. So they have a little bit of anticipation. Yeah. That's, that's how I would good. approach it. So yeah. you would put a description at the very beginning saying, yes. what, what would you say at the very beginning? I would say, um, I probably would use my sense of humor. I would say, okay, students, mm -hmm. today we're going to observe the, um, uh, meanderings of a possum. Let's take a look. <laughs> I like that. Possible. Yeah. Um, anyone else uh, want to want to uh, think about what 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 you would describe 
Um, um, yeah, I think uh, this would come from uh, my uh, short background in screenwriting. But I, I wanted to set the uh, stage and describe it as a possum in the garden hiding. Very good. Yeah, that's 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 very good. That's kind of what I what I thought too. Like you want it because let's see. I have the captions turned out turned on for this, which is very helpful. Because so I she, really wanted them to, you know, use your imagination too, as if well, it's a garden. There are flowers. Uh, uh, he's hiding. So in uh, in uh, in uh, in a way, they bring their own emotions to it, but they get the visuals enough. So that's what I was thinking. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you want to say, you know, where this is happening, kind of what's happening. Uh, I think the narrator, or in this case, the the sweet lady that's filming this, mm -hmm. um, she does a very good job of actually describing what what the animal looks like. She says it's like, it looks like a big mouse. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, its ears look weird. You know, I think that because she says that um you, you don't really need to like go too into detail about the actual animal um but you know i'm not an expert at this but so i i think there's room for for you to kind of add something if you want um but yeah definitely a possum uh yeah so go ahead and you, you said what what did you say what would you say about that in the intro If you don't mind are you asking me i'm sorry yeah yeah oh, yeah i think i actually wrote it down and i wrote uh, down uh possum in the garden that's great yeah and what is the possum doing in the garden like at this hiding. point hiding yeah there you yeah. go that's great and uh okay so so the possum's hiding in this garden here and she's talking about it and then she says she's going to follow him around to see what happens. And then she actually says here, he's on the move. I'm going to follow him around, right? Mm -hmm. And then something happens here. So he moves out of the garden onto this driveway. Do you think that's, and this is just for anyone, do you think this is something you need to throw in there as well? Uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Because uh, yeah. otherwise, a student wouldn't know what was, you know, happening if you didn't say, okay, at this point, the the possum uh, starts walking along a driveway, something of that nature. And then this is a this is a, a another part where something changes, the little action changes. So at this point in the video, the the possum actually sees the woman that's videotaping and stops walking, right? It just sort of stops and stares. And she says, he's walking really slow. Okay, he's upset with me now. So that could mean a lot of different things if, if you couldn't see what was happening in this video. So this might also be a point where you would say, okay, the possum stops and stares at the woman you know, something like that, and then so on, right? And then it continues moving, right? She sort of, she does a great job of sort of describing the behavior of typical behavior and why it might be looking sick. Uh, and then it, so it continues moving and kind of crawls along the fence, right? And then it sort of hides behind a bush, right? I think, those are things we could throw in there. And then, and then you see the scene sort of changes because the woman goes in, she leaves, leaves the possum alone. She comes out later. And now he, this possum is like playing possum, right? So this is another point, a crucial point in the video. A scene changes, it's different. Um, and you know something we could say here anyone want to throw anything out here i mean it's pretty obvious go ahead if someone's wants is brave is enough dead or is he sick 
right here? Yeah. Um, I think he's, I don't, I think he's just playing dead. No, here. I thought about the line that I would. Uh, um, oh, go ahead. Yeah. I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I was thinking about the line. Um, yeah, I would, I would just add, uh, um, she is wondering if uh, the possum is dead or is he sick? So she actually says, she's, she actually says, oh my God, he's lying there. Is he really dead? So she, she's ah. expressing that. So we don't have to describe her, um, what she's thinking because she, she expresses it herself. Mm -hmm. However, visually, right? Visually what's going on, uh, you might want to like, where, where is the possum now? What, what is the possum doing? She does say he's lying there. But I think because of the scene changes, I would I would say the possum is lying on the on the ground or, or in the dirt, something like that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then and then she she comes back an hour later, and then and then the possum's gone. So he he wasn't dead. <laughs> He's fine. I love her reaction, you know. She's just very happy <laughs> that the possum is God bless gone. His soul. <laughs> yeah. I one thing, uh, Cyrus, just sure. I don't know if it was a good idea to give the students uh, or to give the students that the possum may be acting up or pretending to be dead or sick. I would ask the students to search, research and find out what information they could find to help them figure out what's going on with it. I don't know, maybe that helps or... I don't know. I that mean, doesn't help. That that would help if if I, I don't think you would need that in the description, but if you wanted to use this video in a biology class, you could definitely have them research possums because you know they've been around since the dinosaurs. There's they're like really amazing creatures, and they're the only marsupial in North America. They've they're just, I mean, I've done all this. <laughs> looking into them uh, but you know there's definitely some amazing things to learn about possums and how they've survived so long and they're such ancient creatures so yeah you can use that I wouldn't necessarily put that in the video again you're not you don't want to add anything um, that goes sort of beyond what's on the screen um, but but definitely you know to spark people. That's the point of putting videos in our courses, right? You want them to learn something and maybe research beyond. Uh, so, you know, this is very engaging. And then this, this kind of might uh, spur them on to do a project on marsupials or something like that. All right, I see a couple hands raised. So go ahead. I, I'm not really looking at the hands. I just sort of see a um, hands raised. So someone has a question. Yeah. Yeah, that's mine. Um, I have a tendency to always uh, look for these uh, 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 new technologies on my phone. And it says that it's uh, available at the App Store too. Uh, have you have any experience with the app? Is that as good as uh, uh, opening the page on a you know, the website on your computer? So um, the... The actual videos, when you put them inside Canvas, or if you just are watching them or mm -hmm. listening to them, uh, then you can watch them on any any device, basically, that you can watch YouTube on or access Canvas on. For creating these, uh, I haven't met, I haven't played around with any of the you describe. If you describe has a dedicated app, uh, I, I haven't played with that, but uh, I know it works really well on a computer. It, so that's what I've been using. All right. Thank you so much, Cyrus. Sure. Okay. So that was really great. That's a good exercise. One, one question, Chris, Cyrus. Chris has uh, a question. Sure. Um, and I may be jumping ahead here, but um, so I apologize if I am. Uh, but how would I apply this level of exposition or do you even need to for like a more commercialized video? Like, you know, those crash course videos, those disciplinary crash course videos. I don't know if you're familiar with crash course. That's the YouTube handle name. And uh, huh? it, I mean, that's a more much more dynamic video with more production behind it. And there's animation in the background and it's a guy that's always speaking. So uh, I just like how it, everything's quite dynamic and how 
the video progresses, it, it just seems like it'd be difficult to apply this level of exposition to a, that kind of more dynamic video. And I'm not even sure it would help because it'd be so many interruptions, you know, because these videos are usually around four to five minutes. Uh, like you could put crash course, uh, that might be enough because uh, the video, they're pretty, well, yeah, there you go. They're showing up, foreign policy, see, see how foreign policy crash course government. Oh, they do have one there. That'd be interesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah I would I would recommend watching because yeah, some someone's already done it for a few oh, of wow. these. There you and go. I would I would watch them and see if if they kind of work right. Do it, do it in a way that that looks good or sounds good to you, okay. and then take that as a example. Um, yeah, it, it does get difficult if it's a longer video with the lots of stuff going on. I, I could see how that would be a challenge, you know? So yeah, you just want to be aware of, um, and, and like we said before, if, if you don't, if you don't have any students that require these, then go ahead and use those, those videos that might be longer or more hard to describe, but it's good to have kind of a backup plan. So maybe you could even have an alternative resource that explains some of this stuff happening in these videos. But um, yeah, as a best practice, you know, if you have a student who needs it, then um, you can do it. And also that's kind of what the vendors are for. So if you have a really tough video, you can go through the vendor, through the grant and get that done. And I, I will, we haven't really figured out that whole, we thought we had it figured out how to get that grant. Uh, it's just a form. It's, it's um, and then someone in the college has to approve it. So we're just trying to figure out who that person is right now. But once we have that, I'll, I'll share that information with everyone, uh, that process. So yeah, if it's, if it's really difficult, if this is going to take you hours and hours to do, then, then yeah, you might want to go through the vendor. But look, look at what's up there, and, then, and maybe you can do it yourself, right? So um, back to, so we found our video. So the way you can... Uh, describe this and you describe, you would need the link for the video, or you could search by the title. So this title is Possum Playing Dead. We could search that in, in you describe, but the way to get to this specific exact video is you copy the link. And to do that, you would just um, go down below the video and you'll see a little share there. And that this is my preferred way of copying a link. You could also just copy it up in the browser up at the top. That's another place you can copy that link, but I like to use the share button down here below the video. And the reason I like this one is that it has next to the link, it has a copy already there. You just click on copy and it copies it to my clipboard. And that way I don't have to highlight and, you know, do any other things like that. So once I've copied the link, I just go back to you describe. And in the search, I would paste that link, right click, select paste, and then click search. And then there it is, you'll see it pop, it's first it tells us there's no described videos that match your search, but then it also shows that video that we watched and it has a little button below the thumbnail that says describe. So now it's, this is how you get to the, to the area where you actually create these descriptions. Okay. So you would just click on that describe button and that opens up this you describe editor. And you'll see here, uh, it's pretty straightforward, maybe, <laughs> for, for me at least, but you have a nice section to the right of the video that has notes. So this is a place where you could have your script, right? You could paste it in here once you've written that out. And below that, you have on the left below the video, you have a timeline here. And this sort of, you'll see as, I, as we play the video, this moves along. And then you can 
you have two choices. You can add inline, which is voiceover that runs at the synchronously with the video. And you have add extended, which is what we saw in that earlier example where the video pauses and then you your voice would 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 play and then once your voice stops then the video continues so um which so we we talked about at the very beginning of the video setting up the scene for the student um which one of these would you use anyone want to guess <laughs> Add in, line. add in line. Okay. So here I'll play the video. Just the beginning. As I was strolling in my garden today. So in line, if we want to say uh, a possum is hiding in the garden, um, we might be able to fit that in because she basically starts, but she starts talking pretty quick. She starts talking at like one or two seconds in. So for this one, I would actually use the extended personally, just because that would give you a little more time. So, um, so what you would do, and and when I say extended, that means um, it it actually pauses the video, and and then it'll uh, play your voiceover. So for this, I think we kind of agreed on the possum is lying in the garden. And another thing about these descriptions I didn't mention, you kind of want to use engaging language. And, and maybe this is more my opinion, but um, it should be kind of uh, interesting <laughs> to the listener because this is a great video. So you kind of want to match that. Um, and I'll show you one resource that I like to use. So we could say the possum is lying in the garden, or you could use some other word for lying, right? A, a different word, sleeping. Uh, one website I really like that I found watching a different you describe training was this one called powerthesaurus.org. And this is a really interesting website where you can just put in a word like lying and it'll give you, actually, this is more about, I'll try sleeping. And it's just a thesaurus, but I really like this website because it gives you some interesting stuff. So sleep, napping, uh, dormancy, slumbering. There's a great word, slumbering, resting. Uh, so I like, you know, you might want to use some, some interesting words when you're describing these videos. You know, the man sits at a table isn't, isn't very interesting. How is the man sitting on the table is he perching on the table is he you know doing some other you know you can find a cool word basically about hiding hiding let's see what comes up for hiding concealing oh that's a good Concealed. one yeah or maybe even disguising because um we can say uh, a dark gray strange animal mm -hmm. disguising in the garden there you go. <laughs> All right. So yeah, you can see this is kind of can be a creative exercise here. So so yeah, I like that. The dark gray, a dark, a dark uh, gray creature. Uh, and what what did you say was the next word? Uh, disguising uh, in the garden. Uh, disguising. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know that that might be too much, uh, but uh, I'll, I'll use it. Lurking, lurks. I like that. Lurks. Yeah, that's a good one. In the garden. Okay. And again, we're not really describing what type of flowers these are. That there's a pot behind this creature. That there's bricks here, because um, that's not that necessary, in my opinion. Uh, this isn't a gardening video. This is a garden, I think, is enough. I don't think you don't want to do too much, right? Just set the scene. And I think the, the lady in the video that's doing the talking does a really good job. So we don't have to, to really fill in too many blanks here. But I think this is a good setup. 
And I like the fact that we're, we're not actually revealing that it's a possum because even though that's the title possum playing dead, so everyone kind of knows what it is going to, what it's going to be. But I like that in the video, she, it's sort of a surprise to her because she actually says it's like a mouse. <laughs> it's like a large mouse. And then later on, she figures out it's a possum. So we're actually not giving away spoiling anything. And so we're kind of keeping that conceit up. So here we go. A dark gray creature lurks in the garden. So that could be our first line. So to, to insert that before this plays out, we would just simply click on add extended, right? Which is the purple button. And I really like how they use different color to indicate meaning. Uh, so we'll click on that. And you'll see, once we click that, it opened up a few extra tools. And one is a label, right? So we could title this intro. We could type in intro for the label if you want. Again, this is this is optional, this labeling, but it, it might be helpful um, if you if you come back and edit these later, or if you're, you know, if you have a whole bunch of them, right? So you want to, you know, you might want to go back. And this is a quick way to navigate to those if you've labeled them uh, meaningfully. And you, then below the label, you can type in a label and then you can have, uh, you have a, re a red record button and a little trash bin. So if you sneeze or if a helicopter flies by <laughs> or whatever, if something happens or you, you mess up, you can always delete the track once you've recorded it and re-record it. So it's very, very simple. So I'm gonna go ahead and click record and I'll take a sip of water. <laughs> um, my voice isn't the greatest. We do have Nick Smith in the house and Nick Smith is actually a professional voiceover actor as well as a communications instructor. I've used him many times. So if you want, you can probably hire, hire Nick to do it. <laughs> but uh, um, Nick, do you wanna actually just read this line for us to see how, how, how you would say it? Is Nick still in here? I'm still Nick here. Might... Okay, go ahead. If you... I'm sorry to put you on the spot. No, can I've, you... got, I've got a dog barking in the background, my puppy. Here we go. A dark gray creature lurks in the garden. How about that? <laughs> Isn't that fantastic? Oh, that sounds like a great movie. Right? I can't compete with that. But like, there you go. That's sort of the high, that's the high bar Nick has set. <clears throat> so I don't know if I can compete, but I'm going to try. A dark great, I can't. I'm not <laughs> even going to try. All right, so I'm about ready. I'm going to click the little record button. A dark gray creature lurks in the garden. All right, and then I had to click the little stop. So once you click that record button, it turns into a little... Uh, Kind of a white square which is the stop button so there we go i've recorded it and i'm going to click on save at the bottom there so we've recorded our first one and you can see on the timeline it's really small but there's a little purple line there and purple means extended so if we if I did this correctly, it, it should play that before the video starts. So we can listen back to it by just clicking the play button on the video right here. So let's see if I did it, if it works. Let's see. Sometimes you have to rewind, play it and then rewind it, but we'll see. As I was strolling in my garden today. Oops. A dark gray creature lurks in the garden as i was strolling in my garden so there we go i'm no nick smith but but uh i think that that worked uh, as, about as good as i could do it so there we go we got our first one in there all right and then if you want you can play the video but we already kind of sussed out where we want to put the stuff so she she does a good job describing of where this creature is going and then remember right here there's a little scene change. He leaves the garden and goes to the driveway. So let's listen to that and then. 
I'm going to follow around. He came out on the other side. He came out on the other side. So we kind of we want to add another. Uh, she doesn't say he came out onto my driveway. So we we kind of want to describe that this creature is sort of walking, walks along the driveway. So um, let's see what we got for time. We got about a half hour left, maybe 35 minutes. So I'm just going to say, uh, um, anyone want to jump in with what we should say here again? He finds his way into the street. Yeah, that's that's pretty good. Um, it's it's not really a street. Street might involve some danger uh, that well, isn't present. Like the garden. Yeah, so we could we could say the possum emerges, maybe something like that, emerges from the garden, and. Yeah. And does anyone have a, a better word for walks? We, we can use our, we can use our, our thesaurus Moses. here. Rolls. Promenades. Stro what was that? Moses. Moses, strolls. <laughs> I like all of those. Faces. Tramps here. <laughs> That's a good one. Uh, Moses, I'm going to use Moses. Moses along a uh, concrete path or a paved path or Moses, Moses along, along, and yeah, a paved path. That's good alliteration, uh, but that might be that might kind of evoke some some different meaning of what it is. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think driveway is what we're going to use here. Mm -hmm. uh, at least you know Sidewalk. you could, yeah, I mean it's I think it's a it's a carport, right? This is a this is a driveway. So I'm going to call it what it is. <laughs> but again, you know, you you don't want to that's the thing. You don't want to um take any creative <laughs> license when it comes to describing. You can be creative in the language, but but in the actual setting and stuff, you want to be accurate as possible for the student. Right, we're trying to give the student the same, ex a similar experience uh, for for a student that could see. So we want to be careful here. We want to pause it where there's a little gap because there's not enough room to actually talk over the video here. So I'm going to try to find the perfect spot to do this. I'm going to follow around. I'm going to follow around. So then she stops, and then she'll start talking in like one second here. So I paused it right here. I believe this is a good spot. Um, I've got my little my little script up here. So I'm going to click again on Add Extended and click Record. The possum emerges from the garden and moseys along the driveway. All right, and I, I can label this driveway, something like that. All right, you can see, again, it's added that little uh, line there. So at 47 seconds, that's when this, this uh, starts. And again, uh, we can uh, back up the video a little bit just to listen to make sure that I'm not talking, it's not talking mid-sentence and interrupting and distracting from uh, the actual woman talking in the video. So we'll just play it here and listen. I'm going to follow around. The possum emerges from the garden and moseys along the driveway. He came out on the other side. He is walking really slow as if he's sick. Okay, he's upset with me now. All right. So I actually, <laughs> when I watched that, Mosey was a pretty perfect description. All right. So, so the possum's now stopped and is staring, right? So we want to, we want to tell the listener uh, that this action is happening on the video. So I paused it here, but I'm going to listen a little bit more of what she says. Slow as if he's sick. 
Okay, he's upset with me now. I think I need to back out. So maybe when she says, I think he's upset with me now, we could actually do it maybe a little before, a little after. Um, so yeah, it, you kind of want to find that perfect spot. But I think when she says, he, okay, he's upset with me now, we can say, you know, the possum stops and stares at. As if he's sick. Okay, he's upset with me now. All right, so that's where I, I feel like that's a good place to throw in another one. Uh, anyone want to throw in a little script here? Slowly I turn, step by step. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Right. Uh, the possum, the creature, we can call him a creature again. I like that word. The creature, what? The creature, yeah, stops and stares. Seems upset. Yeah. The creature, um, I'll just, yeah, stops and stares at the at the screen, at the woman, yeah, stares. And we could, yeah, I'll take a little license here. I'm going to add suspiciously, right? Get a little alliteration in there. Uh, we had a hand. Does someone have a question? Hi, Cyrus. It's Michelle. Um, the, when you're describing, though, um, Try not to put your opinions into it. So if you say that he's looking at me angrily, that's like your opinion. You don't, you know, um, just from the training that I got at the Braille Institute, it's just like the facts. So it's kind of like um, an observation. So he turned towards the woman. That's fine. But if you if 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 it's like a child that turns and like the child is like angry, you could say child looks eyebrows down or something like that. And a lot of their the videos that I've used at the Braille Institute Library, they tend to describe what they're seeing, but not adding the emotion to it. Does that make sense? Yeah, thank you so much for, for uh, giving us that knowledge. So yeah, we have Michelle Hernandez, who's uh, very, she, you're, why don't you tell everyone what you do at the college? Because you're a great resource. Oh, I'm... Um, the senior interpreter at West LA College. So I work in the DSPS department. Um, but the reason why I kind of know a little bit about this, um, I, I mainly work with deaf students. However, I have worked with deaf blind students. And so when they're doing videos, we've had to use um, at City College, the Braille Institute Library. So um, for me to, in, or, in order to interpret accurately. So like I've interpreted like the last of the Mohicans and stuff like that and like you know, the scenery is very important. That's a character and the costumes, the character in the movie. So we've had to describe that too. And then also with other things, they don't put in any emotions. They just put in what they're observing, but they don't add to it. If that that's, makes sense. That makes total sense. And I, and thank you so much for mentioning that because we, I started to get a little carried away and yeah. So and even it's fine though, if, it's, if it's your video for your class only, but if you're putting it in, you describe and other people are going to access it, then that might not be accurate. Does that, you know? Yeah. If it it's something it. like, yeah, if something that you could use like in studio. I know one person says you can ask like, is this possum dead or alive? That's like a video that you put in studio and add that, um, like that quiz question in the video in studio because you're only using it for Canvas. But if it's going to be something here where other people could utilize that you just want to go with the the basics and the facts. That's that's really a great point. So so yeah. So we're not we're not going to assign anything we think is happening in this mind of this creature. Uh, we don't know, and 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 we want to leave that up to the listener or the viewer to sort of feel what they feel is going on. We don't want to explain what's happening uh, in the brain of, of, of this creature. I don't think that's even possible. But yeah, so we're just gonna uh, say the creature stops, turns and stares at the woman. I think that's just that we're just saying what's happening here. So even though we can use um, language like Moses to describe how 
the animal is walking. Um, in this case, we don't want to assign any any of our own biases or any of our own thoughts or interpretations, I think. So, and I'm going to use the animal because I already used creature. Okay. Thank you so much, Michelle, for that. So we found our, our little pause point. I'm going to add this one. Again, extended because uh, we don't have enough time to talk over this uh, other narration that's on the video. So I'll click on add extended. I'm going to call this uh, stare and I'll click record. The animal stops, turns, and stares at the woman. Okay. And I'm just going to play along just. So we have a little bit extra time at the end. And we'll go along here. So the, the let's see what she says here. Because we might not have to say that the, the creature walks to the fence, but we'll see. Let me quickly check on his behavior on Wikipedia. So Wikipedia says, when threatened or harmed, they will play possum, mimicking the appearance and smell of a sick or dead animal. This physiological response is involuntary rather than a conscious act. Hmm. So he's definitely looking sick. So I don't know if he's acting it out or he's really sick. I don't know. I'll just watch him and see what happens next. So what happened here was the, the animal stopped, looked at the woman, she backed away, right? And then the animal continued, uh, continued across the driveway and hit, hides behind a bush on the fence, near the fence, right? That, that's a little wordy. Um, I don't know if that we need to add the fence part that that might not that might be too much, but I do think we want to uh, kind of explain a little bit there. So um, the woman backs away, and the possum walks. Uh, and hides, walks across the driveway. And again, we're kind of, I'm kind of doing this on the fly. So uh, you'll probably be a little more prepared when you make these yourself, but uh, just in the, in, for time, I'm just gonna kind of put the woman backs away and the possum walks, continues across the driveway and hides behind a bush. All right, so I'm going to try to think of where to put this in the video. Let's see if there's a natural space where I can go do an inline. This physiological response is involuntary rather than a conscious act. Hmm. So he's definitely looking sick. So I don't know if he's acting it out or he's really sick. I don't know. I'll just watch him and see what happens next. So there's actually like a decent amount of uh, break here where um, she stops talking and we just sort of watch this animal kind of go behind the bush. So even though it's this, the backing away happened before, I'm going to, um, make this just one um, thing, even though it's happening a little later than it happened in the video, I think in this case, it, it shouldn't be a big deal um, because the student kind of is getting the gist of it, right? So I wanna, when she says she's gonna continue to watch, that's when we'll put it in. But he's really sick, I don't know. I'll just watch him 
and see what happens next. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna pause there. She's gonna see what happens next. This time I'm gonna do an add in line and hopefully I can get out my, my description before she starts talking again. So I think I have a few seconds to do that. So let's go ahead and this time I'll click the add in line. And I'm just gonna call this one Bush. And I'll hit record and we'll do this. The woman backs away and the possum walks across the driveway and hides behind a bush. Okay, so I was able to get that out uh, before she started talking again. And you can see again on the timeline, each one of these tracks shows up. And this one is, this time it's yellow and you can see that it's a little bigger because I'm actually talking over the video. But I think that's fine, it actually speeds it up. So it doesn't have to pause every single time. So let's go ahead and watch that. Back it up a little bit. Watching and see what happens next. Oh, maybe I have to click save. Let's see. So if he's acting it out or he's really sick, I don't know. I just watch him and see what happens next. The woman backs away and the possum walks across the driveway and hides behind a bush. But it is strange that Wikipedia is saying that uh, it plays sick or dead. I mean, even dead when feels threatened. Anyways, I'm going to go inside and see later on. Uh, he's still sitting there. He's not going anywhere. I don't know. Okay, I'll check on him, check on him later. Oh my God! He's lying there. Is he really dead? No, his stomach is moving. Oh! So here we have a little scene change. And she's very surprised because he's, he's lying. He looks like he might be dead. Um, I kind of want to set this up before my instinct is to kind of before this starts to just say that the possum lies motionless on the dirt. I think that's a quick way to do it. So let's see. I got to find the right spot. On him later. Oh my God. So after she says later, that's when I'm going to pause it. I'm just getting that perfect spot by hitting this play button and it pausing it when I need to. Check on, him, check on him later. Okay, so I, she's finished saying later. And now we're going to switch to that new scene. Uh, and we had the possum lies motionless in the dirt. Okay, and this one is going to be an extended because we're pausing. So I'll click add extended. I'll, I'll put uh, playing dead as my label and I'll click record. Let me get my notes visible. Here we go. The possum lies motionless in the dirt. Okay. You can see it's there. It's recorded. I'll click save and then we will, I'm just going to move along here. He's lying there. Is he really dead? No, his stomach is moving. Oh, Wikipedia says that he pretends to be dead. Is he? Is that what he's doing? Oh my God. <laughs> and when I went back after one hour, it's like he's gone. Thank God for that. You know, he is alive and he is safe. God bless him. It was an amazing experience. Okay, so... When I first watched this video, my instinct was to actually describe that the possum was, wasn't there anymore. But actually listening back to this a few times, she, she says it right there. After coming back after one hour, he's gone. So actually the scene doesn't change. And she describes the, the action, the difference, which is the possum's no longer there and she's very thankful. So I think at this point we're, we're done. Um, 
any anyone else agree or disagree or have any comment on that? Okay, I'll take that silence as a yes. So um, what I would recommend too is playing it back all the way through just to make sure. But we were we were checking it. We, we kind of checked it as we went along. Uh, but there is a play from start button that you can use and that'll just play the whole thing back and you can listen to it and make sure it all sounds good. And then again, if, if you if you notice something uh, that needs to be changed, you can just delete these, delete any track that you've labeled that that doesn't match up uh, or doesn't work. But I think we're done here. So the last step is to click this blue publish button. Whoops, my arrows are getting worse and worse. Uh, it's in the lower right corner and that's to publish the video to you describe. That's our last step. And it gives me a little thing, are you sure? And I click okay. All right. And that's it, it's published. So now if we search, let's search possum. And this is actually showing up and it's the only, <laughs> it's the only possum video on you describe that's described. So who knows, maybe some people will watch this now that we've described it and they'll enjoy it as much as we enjoyed it. So um, that's kind of the basics of how to use it. I do have more of a how to video on, on what I just did. So if, if um, I'll get the contact for all of you and I'll send you some resources. Um, but that's how to how to make it. And we've got a little bit of time. And now I want to show you how to embed this inside of Canvas, which unfortunately isn't as easy as it should be, but <laughs> um, I've figured it out. So I'm going to show you the tricks so you don't have to suffer through figuring it out. So um, first you click on the video once you've searched it and found the, the one you want. In this case, we want this possum video that we just made. So you just click on the video. And then on the left, you're gonna see these different icons. And it's kind of confusing because there's, if you hover over them, it tells you what they are. Um, it should, let's see. Yeah, so the bottom one with the, these kind of bracketed arrows, these arrow brackets, it says create an HTML snippet. I know you can't read that because it's really tiny. Um, that's actually the one you're going to use with those brackets. The one above it actually says embed this video. But when you click this one, the code that it copies doesn't work in Canvas. It's it's uh, it's really strange. And I've, I've emailed them and said, hey, can you fix your embed button? But unfortunately, that's, that's how it is. So this is what it looks like. Let's see if I can do it. It's, it's, it's not the right embed code. It doesn't work in Canvas. So what you need to do is create, click on that create an HTML snippet, which is those arrow brackets. And that's gonna automatically copy the embed code to uh, your clipboard. So then you can go into Canvas. Let me just go to Canvas. And sorry, I didn't have this one prepared. Probably should have. Okay. So now that we've copied that code, you can go into a class and wherever you want to put it in Canvas, whether it's on a page or in a, in a quiz or anywhere you want in an assignment, you would just go to that page, right? We've all kind of done this, I think. You click on the edit button to get into the editor and I'll zoom in a bit. And the one the tool that you want to use is that little cloud that shows up in those that list of icons. It's on the right-hand side. It's the furthest one to the right. 
Alternatively, you can also click on the insert and it's also down there and it actually says embed. So if you click insert and embed, it'll do the same thing as clicking that little icon. So whichever way you wanna do it, the first thing you wanna do is pick where on the page you want that video to show up. Do you want it at the top? Do you want it at the bottom? You would just click inside the page and move your little cursor to where you want it. I just went to the last sentence and hit return to get me below this paragraph. And that's where I want my video to go. So I will now click on insert and embed. And here you click inside this box that says embed. And here's where you paste that code that automatically copied when I clicked on that little bracketed arrows on you describe. And you can see this is actually an embed code. This is a proper embed code because it has the word iframe. Uh, for this, unfortunately, uh, this code isn't correct. It has a, it has a little S here <laughs> instead of a number in the width, right? That, that tells Canvas how wide you want the video to be. So if you don't edit this code right in at this point, it's gonna show up as a really tiny, um, unusable thing. So I'm gonna click Submit just to show you that. I'm gonna walk over. You're gonna you walk can over? See, you don't want me to go? No, because it's, like, oh, it's like, uh, yeah. So let me tell just, her that. I'm going to mute everyone if I yeah, can. Yeah, tell her to mute all. All right. Sorry. We had a little background noise. Um, so you can see like that embed code, if you don't, if you don't edit it, it, it's tiny and it's really weird. It doesn't let you adjust anything or turn on the captions, right? Um, so I'm going to show you the proper way to edit that embed code. Once we're in here, I'm just deleting that one. I'm going to do it again. This time I'll click the little embed button, paste in the code. And these are the numbers you just have to kind of remember. Um, anything above 500 is good. So you can do 500 under the width next in, inside those quotations. And then for the height, you also want to make it 500. If you want it a little bigger, you can do 600, 600. Uh, it's just up to you, but I'll show you what this looks like with 500, 500. So I'm going to, so I've made my little change to the width and the height, and I'm going to click submit and I'll click save. So you can see this just like a student would. And here it is in canvas. And because I did those numbers, it's showing up at a, at a decent size and it doesn't have a scroll bar. If you, if you don't, uh, do the numbers correctly. You have this weird little scroll bar, which makes the student have to scroll up and down sometimes, which is, I don't like. So, so now it is, there it is. We've embedded it inside of Canvas. The students can now play the video and listen to the description as it goes. A dark gray creature lurks in the garden. And that's it. And then if they want, they can turn on the captions. So that's, pretty much it. I can't believe we did it. We've got a few minutes to spare. Um, I will check my notes. Maybe there's something else we can do. Um, let's see if I have a poll. I'm going to, I'm going to maybe launch a poll here. Let's see. Oh, here's some resources. I'm going to paste these in the chat. I'm not gonna paste this uh, document for the grant because we haven't finalized that info, but um, let me paste this in the chat. All right, here we go. So these are links you can copy and paste if you look in the chat. There's some getting started with you describe audio description basics, a little thing that talks about the differences in line and extended. I think we covered that. There's my demo video, which I made just sort of a walkthrough of how to do it. Powerthesaurus.org and the CSUN info uh, graphic there. And let's see if I have a cool poll. Let's see. 
Let's do the description poll. Okay. Which of the following needs to be described in a video? We have important action taking place, talking heads, text on slides that is woven into what you say, musical score. Okay, very satisfying. <laughs> there, oh, one person got one wrong. I don't know if they're trolling me. Let's see here. I'm gonna end the poll because I think you everyone pretty much knows this. Uh, yes, important action taking place. Actually, text on slides is a is is important. Um, but if if it's already if if you're talking about what's on the slide in a descriptive way, then you wouldn't need to add extra audio descriptions for that. But that's that's a, a, a one to keep aware of, right? Um, let's see if I have any other polls that are fun. I kind of like these polls. Iris, one, go ahead. One quick question. Um, I, I kind of missed it in the beginning. So to is the first thing you do to access you describe, you go to the you describe website and then pull up your Google account from there. Or do you go to Google and there's some way to get to you describe from Google first? Um, you, I recommend if you have a Google account to log into it, like log into Gmail first and then open a new tab and then go to you describe because that way you, you won't have to uh, enter your password or anything. But um, uh, it doesn't really matter. If you go to you describe and then click sign in, you'll just have to sign in using your, it'll, it'll say sign in using your Google account. It's really pretty straightforward. Uh, one thing we didn't talk about though um, is uh, equipment that you might wanna use. Uh, I have a pretty cheap, I don't know if you can see it, this little microphone, it plugs into my computer. Good audio is super important as Nick Smith knows. Um, because the student isn't seeing anything, all they have is the audio. So the, the clearer you sound, the, the better you sound, the less things going on in the background, the better. So I think it's, it's something you might want to invest in, even just for your Zoom meetings. Like if I switch my sound from my mic, from this mic to uh, the regular, I'll, I'll give you an example. I'm going to switch this to my computer mic and and you can tell me if you if you hear the difference so now i'm talking and this is just my computer microphone and then i'll switch it to my mic my actual external microphone and you can hear the difference i'm hoping <laughs> if not then maybe i i, I wasted my money but um, that's something you might want to get um, another thing you want to do when you're making these videos, especially if you're talking over the video, is use some headphones, because if, if you have the audio of the video coming out and then being recorded again while you're talking, uh, that can create this kind of echo effect. So those are a few extra little best practices. Like I have these little earbuds in, so all the audio from my computer is going into my ears. It's not being picked up by the microphone. So um, that's just another little thing. So but, uh, the minimum you wanna use headphones, but if you wanna go a little further, get an external mic. It'll make all of your Zoom meetings better as well. So they're cheap. This was like, I think these are like 60 bucks. This is a Samsung, Samsung Meteor mic, but there's a lot of better ones. Just look up um, good external microphone and you'll see the ratings and you can find a good one. Hey Cyrus, just a quick question. Uh, my headset has a mic built in together. Would that be just as good or a specific external mic is what you recommend? No, I think, I think that's good. I think uh, that, that is a, technically an external mic and, and you have headphones. So, and the good thing about that is if you move around, it's going to pick it up wherever you move your head. So I think that's, that's perfectly fine. And I can hear I can hear you crystal clear right now. You've got a great voice too. So 
yeah, I'm Ooh, sure. Uh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm using my, I'm not using my headphone right now, but if it's coming good, that's good. Thank you. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's just something to be aware of. It, you know, you don't want to sound like sometimes you're, it depends on what kind of computer you have, but sometimes it can have that tin can effect where it just really sounds very thin and not very appealing. You want your voice to be as full and beautiful as possible. All right. So we're hit, we just hit 1130. If uh, anyone has uh, uh, any questions, yes, I will be emailing these uh, resources to anyone. Thank you. But thank you all for joining me. I hope you, you go ahead and do this. If not for your classes, just if you're bored and you want to you know, make a nice video for someone else to enjoy. If you find a nice video on YouTube that you think, hey, this is cool. Um, I think this is such a neat thing that we can do and help our students. Thank you, Cyrus. You're welcome. Thank you.